This is a continuation of a previous tutorial talking about geostatistical analysis. In the previous tutorial, you uh, brought in data from Excel, and the data was temperature data for today um, at different weather stations in Las Vegas Valley. And we are interested in creating uh, the map of temperature for today uh, using interpolation where the data from these points will be used to, to find data at unknown points. So first of all, in order to see where are the hot spots in the valley, let's go and uh, change the symbology by quantities and select the temperature as a quantity and select the green to red uh, ramp and maybe increase the classes to 7 and you can right click the symbol um, or uh, left click the symbol and change the properties of all symbols and increase the size maybe to 10 and apply and you should see that there are some hot spots in the valley uh, this morning now that does not mean that these are heat islands but this could be one of those days where this area is hotter than the other because of um, several reasons uh, overnight or um, so we are interested in creating map in order to do that uh, we will use uh, geostatistical wizard and if you click the wizard you will see that there are many types of tools available there are deterministic methods, geostatistical methods, and interpolation with barriers method. So in this tutorial we'll talk about the deterministic method. The deterministic method, for example, uh, we'll use the inverse distance method, is based upon the distance from the known points. So for example, if uh, we are interested in computing the value at this unknown point where the arrow is, then the value here is computed um, based upon the uh, weighted average of the values all around, but the weighting is based upon 1 over the distance. So the farther a point is from this location, the lesser will be its contribution to the, the, the computation of temperature here. Now when we use this tool, um, we always have to select where the source of data is. So in our case, it's the, the, the weather stations. And you always have to select which data field presents your data. So in this case, it is the temperature. And we are not waiting by any other thing. We are just using the inverse distance waiting. And you click Next. And here we are um, looking at the... Uh, the properties, how how the general properties, how this is uh, to be done. So the power is two. Um, at this point, just select the the uh, the the default values and keep clicking next, and you will see that what it has done, it has fitted a model into our data, and it is using the predictions based upon this model. So if this is the model then the actual value has some error and here there are um, th these are the values for all the stations where the, the the temperature is known you can see that these were the measured values and then it has based on this model some predicted values and there are some errors some places have high error and some places have low errors but um, there's always an error involved and it depends upon what method we use um, in in performing this interpolation so if you click finish it will do the computation and it will show you uh, the results of of this interpolation it, it will show you the details of what methods was used what was the power um, of the 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 variable that was used and uh, different parameters that were uh, used in in performing the inverse distance weighted interpolation. So click OK and you will see that it will show you a map of interpolation. 
Um, here you can see that the hotspots are uh, are there uh, the way we kind of notice them from the point data. If you bring the point data on top of this, you will see that the overall pattern that has been derived from these points uh, depends upon what the point data was. Um, and the other thing you should notice that as we um, look at the isolated points, they are concentric circles and that was the, the variable power two that we used uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it more. Um, but overall you can see that the interpolation captures the data from points and does its best based upon the method we pick um, to do. And this is a deterministic method in which not much statistical information about the spatial variation is used. And we will, use, we will talk about Krigging where the statistical method uh, actually uses the information about um, how is the data varying spatially and uses that information to give us a better estimate of interpolation. This is how you can perform interpolation using inverse distance uh, weighted interpolation.